can look for me? Yes, ma'am. Thank you.
So once again, thank you very much, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar on opportunities and challenges of tourism post-COVID era. Today, we will start with a brief introduction about COVID-19 in the pandemic, the facts and figures. Then we will move to tourism crisis and why tourism is affecting the crisis and what's nature of tourism and the main impacts on of COVID-19 on tourism, identified challenges and recognized opportunity. And finally, uh, we will address some kind of strategies and in terms of broader perspective. So, as you know, COVID-19 pandemic, it's, uh, it's challenging the world, isn't it? The novel coronavirus is challenging the world, every sector, every part of the world, every region, is affected by this pandemic. The scientific community is struggling to find a vaccine. Every day there is a new information coming up regarding this pandemic. 
with no vaccine and limited medical capacity to treat the disease. The non pharmaceutical interventions are the main strategy to contain. So, COVID 19 is a scenario of uncertainty. There is uncertainty everywhere. We don't know when it's going to go, how we are going to face it, because some countries are successfully challenged to control the COVID 19 pandemic, even though their response tried by the second or third world, for example, in the pool, Japan, or Korea. These countries are successfully prevented it in the fight to the first status, but now they are also under a fear of the second or third world that is affecting the tourism industry in a very bad situation. So, for your understanding, this is the current situation. As you know, COVID-19 is started in late stage in December 2019 from Wuhan, China, a fresh market, running fresh market from Wuhan. And then the NGO, this engine of our political dramas, we came to know about this pandemic around the 15th of January. You can see from the first picture, first graph, we started the spreading. But after two months, you can see how the outcome is spreading. Now, as from the latest information that is yesterday, the bigger show find the good information in this one. There is a lot of death is happening. And as uh, because of the international games and politics happening in this related to this pandemic, this is just an exciting information that we have and have no disclosing in jail for its own bonus circumstances in the country. But according to the WHO, this is the fact that it went through the big uh, blockouts. When they are born, they almost everywhere in the world are affected by the COVID 19 pandemic. So, why is it so that we are putting the two together? If you have to put the two together, you can put the two together and put the two together. There is a misunderstanding. First, there is a reason that you are a national business. That is directly or indirectly or perhaps of the global economy. Crisis is not a new thing, new form. First, there is a reason that you are susceptible to external factors. And the factors may be in the American development of political and health, like or terrorist attack, or just like this kind of economics, every time, every century is giving some kind of challenges to them. If you are looking at the graph, you can see from the last two decades in 2001, you find a September attack that affected the immediate tourism industry for a short period of time. After that, Two years later, SAG outbreak came up. The globe successfully overcame the situation. Then, after 2009, 2009 the, the global economic crisis. If there is no money, there is no travel. So, that is also affected the global uh, tourism hospitality sector. Then, 2015, there is no outbreak. Even that is a small region, that is the global level of pandemic or epidemic, it is also affected. Uh, I mean, the HSS is important. Now, this is pandemic. Pandemic means it is up in the main portion, in the shares of the world. However, this is very special situation because of the uncertainty and because of the world and our own political issues. It's still here, Adam. Sorry? It's still here, Adam. You have two devices. Uh, we are getting an echo. We, we are not able to hear you properly. No, I, I have only one guy's story. But here uh, it's shown that uh, Dr. Bhutila left twice. But anyway, we are getting an echo. Can you do something about this? I think somebody had uh, opened their. Uh, somebody's uh, system is not filtered. That's why. Right. I suspect, strongly suspect, this is not my part because I already signed in from one device. Uh, I think it's not clear. Okay, more okay. phenomenal. Do would you mind give me two seconds? Let me check again if you want. Okay. No, now it's okay. You please proceed. Okay, thank you very much. So the board has experienced a number of major economic impacts in the last two years, as is the graph. And HOH not had similar indications for the global economy with the COVID pandemic. Industry is facing deep their and potential. We are facing something very new, very dangerous, or very, very, uh, uh, 
with trusting more like hope factor. So what is the ultimate impact on COVID? The worldwide outbreak of COVID-19 has caused the world to a standstill, and tourism has been the worst affected of all major economic sectors because tourism is tourism can be a huge canvas and it is directly or indirectly linked to several other business and it is one of the main major share of gdp of several countries that is why tourism is very hardly hit it is at stand still now what are the main impacts one of the main impact of covid-19 to tourism is the closed borders and travel restrictions almost every country is closed their borders to safeguard their citizens and their economy and there is travel restrictions because travel is considered as an agent of super spread as you know if somebody is traveling in an airline or any other way of commute at the same time they are very packed so there is no ventilation and travel considered as agent of super spread because of the contamination and infection levels the commute making huge impact spreading the disease If you can see this figure, the latest one from IATA, the dark shaded blue ones, countries, the regions, they are not accepting any tourists. They have the travel restrictions. If they are not accepting any flights or inbound travel or outbound travel, that means there is no tourism. There is no activity. Everything is freezed now. If you have the faded lines, they are accepting passengers. However. there are some limitations there are some restrictions they are not affecting all nationalities they are picky in uh, selecting allowing the trans uh, transfers even the transfers between the countries because the fear of infection some countries are very high level of they are still like india they are still in the first wave they are under crisis some countries like new zealand australia they already passed the situation so they don't want any more in any more infections from anybody else like passengers so they restricted the travel there are so many other impacts that are directly or indirectly affecting tourism industry that means quarantine measures and health passport as you know the quarantine uh, is going around the world uh, if you want to go to travel to a country many countries are insisting around a two week 14 days quarantine and uh, they need a health passport and uh, disruptions in both supply and demand tourism supply and demand people are not willing to travel recent studies showing that people are scared to travel but in some extent they are like to travel domestically but uh, there is a huge real concern about fear of travel and unemployment even itself tourism itself caused lot of economical crisis and there is lot of people are uh, they are losing their job and uh, even in terms of tourism and all over the world if there is no money for people to travel definitely that is a first a sector should be tourism going to be affected and travel expenditure there is lot of uh, protocols now covid-19 protocols the travel agencies or uh, maybe the travel uh, airlines need to follow because they have to uh, vacant the middle seat so there is they are limiting the capacity already they are under the laws the threat of laws but they are increasing a travel expenditure they need to spend more money to travel so people already don't have any money they are under economic crisis they are losing the jobs and under the fear of travel the tourism activities are most freezed everywhere in the world and there are so many psychological steps something like xenophobia the fear of people especially in european regions the fear of asian asian people they don't want asian people there this is one of the major going to be a major impact on tourism because in many countries like western areas or european regions or australian regions the main market for tourism is from china they are not traveling and people are scared of chinese or asians not you know, asians I, i would say the all to other asians they see no phobia they they scared of people and there is lot of racism is going on everything is changing covid make the entire world change and there are psychological in from tourist side there are lot of psychological and behavioral changes is going on people don't want to travel they fear and uh, they are under stress 
uh, because of they are losing the jobs and they are uh, quarantine isolation and uh, because of the death rates people don't willing to travel and they are very picky about their destination people want to travel to the safest place they don't want to travel to some other asian regions asians are not willing to travel to western regions the recent studies from dosing et al they proving that there's a lot of psychological and behavioral issues are going to happen we have to consider for our industry for as a challenge to address this because this is one of the important measure to the part of a resilience or a recovery you can see the graph that is by world tourism organizations april the deadline you can see that 96% there is year year uh, to date data is available however after april there is nothing in your region there is no travel occurring there is loss of money everywhere the surrounding industry airline hospitality everything is under crisis so this is ground zero for tourism 2020 considering all these facts now we learned about the crisis and what are the main impact and what are the effects is caused by tourism wto the world tourism organization they are they are some releasing some circulars as covid-19 response because this is a high time to response against covid-19 we learned that this crisis may take several years or months to recover but they we need a vaccine however because of the scientific issues of strains changing of the corona virus everybody is under uncertainty so there is some kind of response from world tourism organization to uh, guiding all the world in terms of tourism recovery and resilience that is against a black backdrop of heightened uncertainty up to date and reliable information is more important than ever both for tourist and for the tourism sector the information should be correct that is essential and vital for both tourist they wish to travel and for the tourism sector they need to give a safety secure place for the tourists they are visiting their places according to that there are three stages they identify that is first is recover however they are always saying that people first and travel tomorrow the first preference now is for the health and safety and life of people keep yourself make you make you make you safe now and you can travel tomorrow and then a restart we need to restart the tourism sector because it's a generalized thing every region in the world is on different stage of crisis india is on crisis now as i i mentioned earlier india is on crisis now australia is almost recovered new zealand is almost recovered united states of america is also under crisis united kingdom is recovered so this is a pattern they need to follow the country under crisis for example our country india they are at this time of crisis so they have to think uh, they have to adapt the instructions from wto people first and travel tomorrow then we can restart uh, step by step and go for a long term recovery that is resilience so there are lot of opportunities and challenges for every crisis this is the aftermath of every crisis we this is this is lesson learning every every craft or every crisis or disaster so there are lot of opportunities for tourism this is a sustainable pathway this is a chance for making tourism more sustainable or making sustainable development through tourism by eliminating negative impact as you know tourism is one of the greatest economic activity and also it creating lot of negative impact on economy so social cultural impact and also to environment so this is a time to train themselves and to adapt to the changes and create some kind some sustainable way of tourism and this is also a remedy for over tourism over tourism means uh, travel uh, a particular time lot of people are traveling to a particular place there is a mass of travel happening at the end, the saturation level the carrying capacity of that place is exceeding that is known as over tourism this is mainly happening in many regions like barcelona venice paris etc now there is nobody there so this is a remedy for over tourism 
and also the revitalization of resources like environmental, social, economic, not economic, the environmental factors are revitalizing. If you are watching your newspaper, there is some positive hints for the nature lovers. You can see the ozone layer depletion that is finished now. There is no depletion, there is no holes now. And we can see Himalaya, the great Himalayas after years and years of centuries. We can see the Himalaya from Drakkar. And in South Korea, the Jeju Island, there is new kind of flora and fauna is developing. And pollution level is very low. And that is revitalizing the resources. The earth is cleansing. There's a cleansing action of Mother Earth. And also, this is a transfer, reform or transform the tourism. We need to adapt. So, before COVID, there was a lot of, uh, we, we have developed a lot of tourism products and there is a lot of destinations comes up. The formula, the equilibrium of everything is going to change. So we need to reform and transform and adapt. That was one of the opportunities. It's always going for the good. These are the theoretical and practical. There is a lot of practical applications is going around for the opportunities. However, now the main thing for the tourism sector is to address the challenges. How the tourism sector or a destination or a destination management organization or a governing body is successfully addressing these challenges, that means they are going to get a fast recovery or resilience from this pandemic. However, the main problem is the revolving uncertainty. I think I repeated many times because we don't know when it is going to stop. The previously, the World Health, or World Health Organization said that we can recover from six months, but now we all know this is not going to happen very soon. So, there's a big question, a series of questions we need to answer. When it is going to stop? How we can handle this? And what we need to do? And where we need to go? All these things is a real challenge. Every destination need to answer all of these things. And also the safety and health measures. Tourism is a matter of traveling. It's a social, it's a social movement. People are going like a bunch of uh, travelers, they will go to different places, they will uh, interact with the people. So according to the COVID-19 protocol, that would be a great question at the situation. And how we address the new normal before and after COVID, that's the scenario right now, the new normal. We are, we are not wearing masks every time, we will, uh, we will not sanitize before, but COVID-19 changed many things in our lives. So how we are going to address the new normal is a big question. And the tourist issue. The tourist issue is, if it's, somebody is taking this thing in a very light manner, but this is one of, the, one of the predominant issue that is going to affect the industry after COVID. The tourist issues. The regional racism, ethnic issues, and the, how the safety manner, the handling of people, and how the tourists behave, everything is going to be a challenge and economic recovery. The hard hit economy will take time to recover from this crisis. So in general, these are the main opportunities and challenges for post COVID. So we need to prepare for the new normal. We need to be like a chameleon. Look at the picture. How the creature doing? If they are in the pink area, it's changing its color to pink. If it's in other area, that is adapting to that change. I would suggest the tourism industry, including all academics or practitioners or industrialists, we need to think like this, this creature, this reptile. We need to adapt. Adaptability and flexibility will be the key for post-COVID era. The advent of coronavirus has brought for an unprecedented and multifaceted crisis. As the world witnessed, the global shares taken a hit, unemployment rate skyrocketing and oil prices come crashing down. So unemployment rate is going high, oil prices is going high, the entire economy is fluctuating. However, there is no time to rest. Take this time as an opportunity. 
use the opportunity we are identified, face the challenges and adapt the new normal. Here, I am suggesting some strategies for the post-COVID era, the new normal. I think that we need to do a five point, the big five, back to future thoughts. First, to aim for the local markets to promote the staycations and micro holidays. We will learn, we will go for each and every points in uh, following slides. Then we need to promote the safety. We need to relaunch tourism products, especially for special interest tourism, reform the existing packages and collaborate. Collaboration will be the key for post-COVID era. These strategies need to be selected based on destination, region or local. Every destination is facing a different challenge based on COVID-19. We can start from the aim, that is, promote staycation. Do you know the term staycations? Staycations means this is just opposite to the vacation. Staycations is traveling locally using advantages of domestic tourism. Because the recent research is showing that people are scared to travel. However, 70% of them are willing to travel domestically. They want to travel, but domestically. And they want to take a short break go for somewhere in domestic region. They are not want to go to abroad because of the fear of travel, fear of infections or fear of death. And this is a great chance for the tourism industry. They need to, it will be geared towards domestic market. Inside the country, they need to uh, promote this kind of domestic travels. For that, we need to identify the less frequently visited destinations which have a huge potential. For India, there is plenty of destinations we are having. Think about Kerala. There are a lot of destinations with huge potential for making tourism impact. And less crowded places from remote areas. And also, there is a new trend is coming up against COVID-19. That is solo travel. Travel alone. That is against mass tourism. Travel alone to these kind of domestic, uh, the pristine, pristine, fragile, less crowded areas. And COVID-free places near to, near to promote. I'm taking India as, India as an example because uh, most, of, most of the people are from India, so I'm taking India because India is on, on crisis now. And even though there are a lot of places, they are under green zones, COVID-free zones, we need to take chances of it. We need to promote domestic tourism in those kind of areas as a beginning keep the sector alive under this crisis. So, domestic tourism will be the key. We, we need to start, the sector need to start from the domestic tourism. Next conception is travel bubbles. Look at the picture, there is a big bubble there. Air, air, airplane is going here and there within the bar, bubble. Travel bubble is also known as travel corridors or corona corridors. These are essentially an exclusive partnership between neighboring or nearby countries that have demonstrated considerable success in containing and compacting the COVID-19 pandemic within their responsive borders. For example, Australia and New Zealand, they have successfully prevented the COVID-19 infection. These two countries become a bubble and the travel to and fro this country will occur because there, there is no kind of fear of infections because both the countries are uh, fighting against corona very successfully. And also South Korea and Japan, even though they are having a second wave signs, but they also fight it back. Uh, that is travel bubbles. The airlines or people will not go out of the bubble. They will have to keep inside it. These countries then go on to re-establish the connections between them by opening up borders and allowing people to travel freely within the zone without having the need to undergo arrival on quarantine. The quarantine measures is considered as one of the struggles for the NJ tourism sector because it is two weeks time. Many people are having holiday for two weeks. If they want to go to travel, they are just uh, go to the destinations and be in the place for quarantine. They need to, in many countries, they are asking for payment for quarantine, a huge amount. So that is why people are not willing to travel now. Uh, so this kind of travel bubbles, 
between the countries, they are having less F impact on COVID-19, uh, can be helpful for making a good strategy to come up to resilience of the industry. Next is promote safety to tourists, safety first. Travel safety will be much more important from now on. The fear of proximity between people and crowding needs to be avoided. Everything needs to be considered travel safety, people safety. Then there is a lot of global protocols for the new normals. The World Tourism Organizations, they are having global protocols with the new normal. They are, have safe travel stamps. They are giving for uh, those destinations or those sectors in travel and hospitality. They are, giving, they are following the global protocols for the new normal. These countries like Barcelona, Bulgaria, Mexico, uh, etc., they are, they are having, they prove they are f following the protocols that is developed by World Tourism Organizations. They are having the stamp now. That is known as safe travel stamp. This is applicable to all sectors, the wide range of sectors of tourism, that is hospitality, outdoor, retail, aviation, to insurance sector. That is applicable to all sectors of tourism. They, they will give a uh, travel safe travel stamp if they are following the protocols. There are a lot of fundamentals of the protocol we need to follow. It is very important for every sector. If you look at the picture that is Spain, they are following this kind of protocol. You can see every space is one meter away and one meter or two meter away. It's a beach in Spain. They are following the protocols. Sanitization, as you know, we need to sanitize, face mask, physical distancing, clear communication and messaging, digital enablement. That means wherever the people go, they need to give some kind of mobile technology. They need to trace the travelers. And real-time health monitoring and reporting, rapid response. If there is some issue happening, they need to travel, respond very fastly. All the system in place, those countries can apply for the safe travel stamp. Then the WTT will sanction them, allow them the safe travel stamp, then they can re uh, restart the tourism. Remember, survival of the safest will be the motto of future tourism. This destination proving themselves as safe, they will be, become the key destination after COVID. Survival of the safest will be the motto of future tourism. The another strategy we need to follow is relaunch tourism product. This is a time to relaunch. How we can relaunch? We need to cut down the number of days to micro holidays. This is a uh, emerging concept, uh, very uh, fa favorable uh, situation for micro holidays in other regions. That means small holidays, one or two days and short travel, it's similar to staycations and special interest tourism product. They have to develop special interest tourism product. Next strategy is reform and transform existing packages. All the destinations having some kind of packages available. So, this is a high time to reform, to restructure the packages, or they need to transform one form to another form. In a, uh, as an existing package, they need to change it, they need to work on it, they need to change the package of the destination management organizations or the industrialists, they need to change it. For that, they need to adapt some changes and there is a strategy to recreate, reform or transform. They need to first, they need to create a strategy to recreate, reform or transform. Then online interactions in devising strategies Online, the technology will be the key for interactions and change our marketing strategy completely and encourage professionalism in every aspect of tourism. That means the training, essential training for the employees, tourism industry, workers, sectors, etc. The final one is the collaboration. Collaboration will be the key. The tourism sector needs to develop product with other sectors 
so as to create a more resilient and sustainable economy. They need to collaborate each other. As you know, there are hundreds of tourism products available that may be cultural tourism, food tourism, heritage, religious tourism, etc. So, at the time of crisis, for making restarting the sector, we need to collaborate each other. For example, if you are collaborating yoga tourism, Ayurveda tourism, food tourism, wellness, religious and heritage tourism together and they can market it. Collaborate it. Collaborate all its facilities and go for a collaborative market to, and at the stage of first step in strategy. This depends upon the destination and region and how many produce and product they are having it. The collaboration will be the key for the post-COVID strategy to revive tourism sector. Because there is a huge thing between recovery, revitalization and resilience. Recovery is for a short period of time. We need to take short period of time after the crisis. We need to take recovery and resilience is a long term process. This time of crisis, tourism sector, considering all factors like you know, even if it's an academic or industry, they need to think about reviving or keeping uh, this, this sector alive in the time of crisis and start to restart it. There is no immediate remedy for anything. So collaborate all the products, all the similar shared attractions. Come up in a one umbrella, market it, collaborate it, and make the destinations more attractive to tourists. Technology. Technology will be the trend sector. Because COVID-19 proved that social communications, interactions, all the hemispheres is under crisis. So technology needs to develop for hands-free hands measurements. Every sector of tourism, from booking to post-visit experience, technology will be the key. Only by recognizing the crisis is one of the confidence and solvency. Technology will be a critical point. Our global guide, guidelines outline measures to restore confidence and build a new era of safe, seamless and touchless travel in a port of COVID-19 world. That's everything going to be touch, touchless. Recently, the Norwegian airport in Norway, they started to issue air tickets by QR code scanning. There are a lot of airports, they are having self-checking through a tunnel. Passenger, just go to the tunnel and the tunnel having a lot of sanitizers and they will scan everything, they don't need to touch anything. Hotel industries and tourism industries are nowadays more implicated, more adapting the robot artificial intelligence technology robotics. You know, there are a lot of restaurants and hospitality, they are having robot artificial intelligence. They don't need any human people to uh, operate all these things because they, they, they are believing this kind of technological interventions and innovations are changing uh, the uh, stopping or minimizing the contamination. So strong communication to international participation will be invaluable. They need to be a strong communication between the international regions. They need to share the, the innovations and uh, strategies, etc. Then only they can stop these kind of contaminations and they, everybody can come together in the global platform. The technology will be the key. And these measures include the uh, launch of new technology that could make a permanent indelible mark on the boards of aviation and tourism. This include for safety to make the sector more better. The problem with this is the initial cost will be very high at this time of pandemic. This is easy to say theories, but in practical government support may need to, do, uh, may need to give for the industries with the developing countries and they, need, they may need more support because there is a lot of structural changes they need to happen. However, technology will be the trend sector for making uh, travelers more confident. They will travel with confidence if they have more technology. They will go to a hotel. They are using artificial technology. They will go to restaurants if there are robotics making coffee. Believe there is a lot of restaurants in Japan and South Korea started using robots to make coffee. And robot is serving. 
artificial intelligence is coming up. So we are going to winding up with global strategy and tourism updates. It is essential to get an update because this is not end of the world. We have to overcome this using variety of strategies. We have to listen to others, what other destinations is doing, what are the research is coming up. So it is essential to keep our eyes and ear open to adapt and flexible. We have to adapt it. We made our thing strategies flexible. For example, there are a lot of countries are coming up with the travel. There are quarantine free travel from UK to Cyprus from August 1. Ne uh, next month, they are going to start a quarantine free travel because IATA made a suggestions that the quarantine measures making the travel more difficult. Um, for that, they found a remedy that they are having a health pa passport before travel. They need to have all checks done. If any symptoms, they will not travel. They will not allow to travel. And there's also technological tra tracing system will be, uh, will be uh, imp implemented with those passengers. And also the European Union, you know, um, apart from China, the European Union are hit hard, especially the most famous tourist destinations like France or Germany or United Kingdom. They struggle a lot. They are having most highest death rates and Spain as well. So they almost finish and they are reopening its borders to 14 nations. They are very picky because they are there that those countries are considering which country is under crisis now, especially because, for example, they are not giving uh, permission to US travelers. They are not allowing American travelers to enter the region. Definitely, that will be a negative effect because they are the luxurious travelers around the world. However, everybody is trying to make the system alive. First, to recover, then we can go for resilience. Then uh, Goa, India, they are reopened from uh, first week of uh, July. Estonia already reopened, and many more countries are reopening. If you are looking at the picture, from July 7th, a few days ago, Dubai welcomed tourists. However, they are having a different kinds of protocols that according to the guidelines of World Tourism Organizations, they are giving lots of guidelines. Like they need to carry a thermometer, uh, they need to notify if it is a inbound travel, they need to notify embassy, and they are having the health check before, they have to carry it. The, they, every passenger will check for uh, the symptoms, if there is any temp temperature variations or any other symptoms, they will not allow the passenger to travel, and if there is any issues, they have to go for quarantine. Of course, these restrictions and protocols is going to make the sector difficult. However, it's a high time to understand the context and circumstances in global perspectives. So we need to try to revive ourselves, then recover, then be silent. So no storms last forever. Be ready for a post-COVID era. Go for a positive mind. Let us try our best. Do for research, academics, they need to go for research and for the industry list, please stay with, be, be optimistic and you should be ready. There is no storm last forever. Tourism faced a large crisis and be ready for a post COVID-19 era. Thank you very much for your time and attention. And if you have any questions, you can ask. Thank you. Thank you, Madam. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, can we get this uh, study material, like just to the details by email or something? Sure, I will share the information to the organizers. Okay, thank you. Thank you for this. Thank you, you ma'am, for such a insightful and informative session. I now request all the participants, if you have any queries, can you just text in the chat box? Participants, if you have any queries, you can text in the chat box. Magda, if you have any questions.
questions kindly let me know because yes, ma'am yes, yes ma'am uh, ma'am there is a question by siji kritis is there any difference between micro holidays and stay staycation yes staycation there's a slight difference in the concept originally but it look like interchangeably in western world they are look they are taking this concept as interchangeably staycations is quite is taking for around 4 days to 5 days and they can go by overnight stay micro holidays is very short like we are going to, to visit going for travel like two days and this is normally taking to relax the employers currently they are going a short break of two days and they need to come back or they can take a break to their farm for two days and have a nice coffee and come back they are taking micro holidays like that because most of the people are now work from home micro holidays are for them staycations is just opposite for holidays people can move around anywhere in the domestic place and they can meet for four days time then another question uh, by uh, green cream holidays what is the scope of self drive holidays that's it uh, actually that's one of the uh, important questions now everybody is asking about uh, solo type of travel it's fine but the problem is the uh, contaminations and where you are traveling how safe it is will be the key if it's a covid free area you can easily travel but the travel restrictions local body restrictions that will have need need a proper is highly encouraging now but that always depend upon which destination you want to go ma'am another question by nitin tawni need more idea about micro holidays micro holidays is a revolving concepts an emerging concept in the western world to take a short break to get give a psychological relaxation and pleasure this is uh, predominantly started with those uh, type of employees they are working from home they will take one or two days short break they can go to a local place and they can go with their reading or coffee and they are similar to staycations but this is one of the emerging concept for short break you are saying in some other days been right a short break that is micro holidays Now another person suggest measures for revival of tourism industry in the post covid era these all are the strategies suggested these all are the planning measures we suggested we can go for domestic tourism revival staycations micro holidays and go for techno more technological hands free techniques and virtual virtual uh, type of tourism uh for for spending and fancy sports special interest tourism and solo travels all of these practices it depends on the uh, sector or forms of tourism you are involving i will take so develop some of these strategies ma'am another more question is iata certificate necessary to work in travel fields nowadays um i'm not 100% sure about it i think there is some measures is coming up iata stamp and their protocols should be followed to get the license everything is going to change after covid okay ma'am another one what is group of eco tourism in post covid scenario eco tourism there's a uh, there's a trend in around the world is going to happen eco tourism is coming to collaborate with other kind of tourism something like adventurous or food tourism for example bali they are evolving with a new kind of eco tourism and they are sponsoring like paying they are sponsoring the travel the, the tourists to come and visit the eco tourism destinations and the policy is changing to sustainable level and they are encouraging solo travelers single travelers Okay, ma'am. Another one. How will tourism enter in Korea as it opens, and how likely is it to have a bubble with China? Sorry. How is tourism sector in Korea as it opens? How likely is it to have a bubble with China? Oh, you mean Korea? Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. 
Uh, that's a nice question. In Korea, actually, there is a second wave it's expecting in many regions. However, they are open with strict measurements. However, uh, the, the, the tourist, actually, the tourist visa is on suspend now. However, the business travel is possible. However, with a very strict measurement of quarantine. If you want to visit Korea, you have to go for a two weeks quarantine on your price. That is around one lakh Indian rupee. You have to pay your own tax, your own things. And uh, there are some other kind of restrictions like travel passport. You need to take a uh, COVID test before. And if you are obviously coming for an academic conference, uh, uh, or a business trip, it is uh, there is some uh, some uh, uh, minimal I mean, re the reduced uh, restrictions there, and there is no possibility to go for travel bubbles with China, uh, sorry, China and Korea, because we don't know what is going on in China, because there is a third wave is expecting in China, Beijing. So I think Korean government never encourage a travel bubble in China. Am I clear? Yes, ma'am, you're clear. Thank you. Ma'am, another question. What are the measures of revival for tourism industry? All those strategies we discussed can take as a measure for uh, reviving. Also, there is a lot of other measures with sustainable development goal measures is going around and protocol measures is going around. All these things we can consider as a measure depends on which destination and what type of tourism you are involving in. Ma'am, next one, really please tourism, how to be prevent from COVID-19? I just repeat, religious and pilgrimage tourism, how to be prevent from COVID-19? Okay, that's a wonderful question because I recently had a uh, webinar about religious tourism. One of the struggles for the religious tourism is uh, in India, the religious tourism is believed to be very social activity, isn't it? We all are going to any kind of religious place or pilgrimage place that is a huge crowd. That is the main challenge for religious tourism. How we can control the crowd, how we can change our rituals and practices in religious sector. In that, in, the, in that point, we can take all these strategies like micro holidays or going for less crowded places or going for virtual offerings. We can go for, uh, go for technology like uh, the Golden Temple is doing now. They are one of the, um, the largest uh, area for religious tourism in India, in Punjab. What they are doing, they are offering virtual prayers through social media to make this uh, sector revive. And for the pilgrimage, the government of India, Ministry of Tourism, they said they started some of the uh, pilgrimage activities very soon uh, with very tight restrictions, with uh, travel checks, uh, other measures of protocol, sanitization, health passport, etc. Uh, this will be very um, difficult situation for religious tourism because the type, the mass. The, child, the amount of people, the reach and amalgamated product, that will be very difficult for uh, at the time of crisis. If you are especially looking for India at the time of crisis, that will be a real burden for the industry. But we can go for some kind of technology to revive the sector, go for solar travels, control the carrying capacity, control the food fall, or uh, we can enhance some kind of uh, sanitizations or maybe luxurious travel is also possible. We can pick some kind of uh, tourists. They are really willing to visit the places. I think it's very hard, but it's not impossible. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, we are receiving a lot of questions from our YouTube channel. So I request all the participants, uh, due to constraint of time, we are just winding up. And all the queries will be answered. You do one thing, you can uh, post your queries in the registered mail ID and we will just look onto it. And the PPT will also be shared to your registered mail ID. So uh, once again, ma'am, thank you so much. We are about to wind up our session. So now I request the of the Department of Tourism and the convener of the webinar, Reverend Father Shoji Burgess, to propose vote of thanks. <laughs> Okay, it's time to say 
and we thank you. First of all, I thank uh, people from eight countries, 23 states and five union territories of India. Uh, about 850 people participated in, a, in this webinar. I think uh, this is a real success. And uh, uh, we thank our team, thank the Almighty, first of all, for the great benevolence and the providence in arranging this seminar. And it's a time to thank our uh, dear resource person, uh, Dr. Vivida Lal Balachandra Nair. She was uh, really graceful and her presentation was uh, informative, interesting and innovative and the way she answered the question shows how uh, strong she is in both theory and practice in the tourism sector. And uh, uh, ma'am, thank you Lord, thank you Lord for this uh, you, thank you very much. Uh, our principal Dr. K. Georgi, uh, he was with us from the beginning of the planning process and uh, he available to throughout the seminar. Webinar chose his concern for the subject for our department and all of us. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And, and we are grateful for the cooperation of all those who are uh, from, uh, from different parts of the world, including people who are in the YouTube uh, it's live streamed in six YouTube cha uh, uh, Gmail channels. I thank all the delegates who are participating in this. And uh, we will be mailing you uh, the feedback form. Please fill it and we will send you the uh, certificates. And uh, regarding the materials, uh, uh, for the queries, everything, we will be contacting you through this. Uh, and now, all those people who are behind the scene. And first of all, uh, Mr. Manase Benny, our uh, coordinator of this webinar, our faculty member, my teammate, uh, he was organizing all these things with uh, uh, Ms. Saumya Yamraj, our another faculty member. Thank you, my dear uh, colleagues. And here uh, uh, we saw the graceful comparing, that's Dr. Mamida, our faculty member from Commerce Department. A special word of thanks to Dr. Aaron Lawrence for his support from the beginning, from the planning process and mobilization. We thank all the faculty members of Commerce Department and particularly Dr. Regina Cletus, the head of the department. Dr. Uh, our research coordinator Nandu and Rajesh, they were behind the uh, mailing, uh, the communication, uh, the certificate preparation, uh, the Google form preparation, feedback collection, everything. Uh, uh, these two process scholars were doing the things and uh, it's a time to thank uh, our dear brothers. And uh, for the technical support, Dr. Georgie Matthew of English Department, Gigi, Dr. Gigimon of Physics Department, John Sar of Physics Department, Alex Sar of Computer Section, Mindo of NAC Team, and uh, advocate Sonai, uh, all these people were cooperating with us. Thank you, Lord. Uh, it's the time uh, to especially thank our students, both the present students of Master of Tourism and Travel Management and uh, our alumni, your participation, your presence, your encouragement, everything, uh, it's really motivated us. Once again, it's a time to thank one and all. Uh, a special word of thanks to our Dean, Dr. Jichi Mulanguri. Uh, he was continuously uh, motivating me to do a seminar on a webinar on this topic. And uh, it's a time to thank Pandandover once again. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your feedback, your comments, your uh, questions, everything. Uh, we'll be in touch in the future also. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Special thanks to Father Shravati also uh, for the wonderful webinar. Thank you, Bibiza. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. For the excellence there, uh, for the excellent performance. You presented it well uh, with the deep knowledge. 
We seek your collaboration for other activities of our departments. Uh, sure, sure, sir. Just let me know. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.